Good morning, year seven. It's Mrs. McCormack and it's Tuesday morning and we're going to carry on with our lessons on division. So we'll start as usual with our knowledge check. You have four boxes to complete. The first one is mixed multiplication and division facts. The second box is a little bit of um, problem solving and using the vocabulary of prime, even and odd to make groups of numbers. Uh, the number in brackets on the first one is the number of different answers you will find. The other answers also have more than one answer, or well, the other questions have more than one answer. Then we have multiplying by multiples of 10 in the bottom left and on the bottom right, um, looking at equivalent fractions. So if you would like to pause the video and move forward again when you're ready to look at the answers. Okay, if you're ready, I'm going to move on to the answers now. So, the first box is straightforward. Facts from your multiplication tables. And by the way, well done, all those of you that are um, practicing on TTRS, keep going. It's fantastic. Let's have a look at the second box. Okay, so you have the digits one, two, three, and four. And you have to use those digits to make various numbers. In the same number, you may not repeat a digit. So a two digit prime number. So the choices you have are 31, 41, 13, 23 and 43. Okay, so there are five different prime numbers that are two digits that you can make using those digits. Remember, you know it will have to be an odd number as two is the only even prime number. The next one is a four digit even number greater than 4000. So this time there are two different choices. As it's greater than 4000, you know the first digit has to be a four. That's the only way we can be greater than 4000. It's an even number. So if the first digit is four, then the last digit, the fourth digit has to be a two. So the remaining digits, one and three, are in the middle. So the options are 4,132 or 4,312. The one and the three can be placed in a different order. The four and the two have to be where they are. On the third option, the third question, we have a three-digit odd number, which is less than 200. If it is less than 200 and it's three digits, the first digit has to be one. If it is odd, the final digit has to be three. So your choices are 123, 123 or 143, 143. Multiples of 10. Remember 10 squared is 100, 10 cubed is 1000. And as yesterday, we are moving the digits to find the correct place values. All of those have the digit four, but we are multiplying to change the uh, place value of the four, the value of the four. And last of all, equivalent fractions. You should have noticed a pattern there. Um, be careful you didn't get caught out on the bottom row because they were not uh, doubling each time. The pattern was, uh, there wasn't a pattern. They were just all equivalent to one half, but there wasn't actually a pattern there. But you can see that one is half of two, three is half of six, five is half of 10 and 10 is half of 20. Okay, if you need a bit more time to tick and fix, please do so. If there's anything you're not sure about, please stop and have a think or go back to your booklets and see if you can work out where you've gone wrong. So let's move back to division. Now, today we're going to look at division with decimals. Before we start, I would just like to remind you all of a couple of things. You need to be putting all your work on paper each day. 
This cannot be done um, by typing it up. You need to have your work on paper. It's fantastic, those of you that take a photograph and post it. Um, some of you may not be able to do that, but please, for each lesson, you should be taking notes and writing down um, all the key facts to help you with your work, exactly as you would if we were in class. As some of you are racing through the videos and not actually stopping and listening. You really need to play the whole video. The lesson is designed to be about 50 minutes long. Some of you are completing it in five minutes, which tells me that you are not giving it the effort you should. Well done to those of you that are doing a fantastic job and going through the complete video. Well, thank you to those of you that do see the MCQ codes in the video. Um, one last little reminder, please remember if you put the MCQ password codes on the or in the comments you're really not being kind to your friends it is not helping them learn by telling them the password they need to go through the video themselves or they won't be learning and if you go through the whole video in less than 50 minutes then i know you are rushing so you should take about 50 minutes to do the whole thing. And if you have done that, then you will be getting high scores on your MCQ, which you should be really, really proud of. So we're going to smash this today. Let's move on. Paper and pencils at the ready. If you haven't got paper and pencil or pen, then please stop the video and go and get one now. So 68.65 divided by five. So as we have been doing over the last week or so, we have our bus stop. The number we are dividing goes inside the bus stop and the number we are dividing by goes on the outside. So how many times does five go into 68.65? Now yesterday we looked at the hidden decimal points that all integers have. We know that 35 is the same as, has the same value as 35.0 or 35.00. And we smashed uh, division using that yesterday. So today we're actually going to look at when we are given um, a value that's a decimal to start off with. And that's very, very common, obviously, when we're doing money. So we do this exactly the same as we have been doing. How many times does 5 go into 6? It goes one time with a remainder of 1. How many times does 5 go into 18? It goes 3 times with a remainder of 3. Now, what we have to do now, as we did yesterday, is we must put our decimal point lined up in our answer as well as in the question. So we must place our decimal point lined up. We carry on as before. How many fives go into 36? The answer is seven. Seven fives are 35, so we have a remainder of one. How many fives go into 15? And the answer is three. There's no remainder after that, so we've got our answer 13.73. Now we're going to do one more of these, but we're not going to spend a lot of time because you smashed this yesterday. Okay, 60.8615 divided by 5. So this one isn't money because we have four decimal places, 8615. But the method is exactly the same. Bus stop, the number we are dividing goes inside and the number we are dividing by goes on the outside. So how many times does 5 go into 60.8615? We continue exactly as before. How many times does 5 go into 6? Once. Remainder 1. How many times does 5 go into 10? Twice with no remainder. We need to put our decimal point lined up above the decimal point. 
Okay. Now, how many times does five go into eight? One time with a remainder of three. How many times does five go into 36? Seven times, seven fives to 35. So there's a remainder of one. How many times does five go into 11? It goes into 11 two times. Two fives are 10. So again, there is a remainder of one. How many times does 5 go into 15? It goes into 15 exactly three times. So we know our calculation is finished and our answer is 12.1723. Now this is basically the same as what you were doing yesterday. So I think we are going to go straight in to doing a you do. There are only four questions. So I would like you to have a go on paper at these four questions. Again, we have exactly the same type of questions as before, but this time we are starting with a decimal number. I have just noticed looking at question three, that the um, decimal point doesn't appear to have printed. So the amount in question three is 1,235.50. So 1,235 pounds and 50 pence. So please remember that when you are doing that question. So if you would like to pause the video and make sure you do the calculation, show you're working. Remember units if you need to have units in your answer. And when you are ready, please press play to continue. Okay, so when you are ready, we will move on to look at the answers. So the first two are just numerical, so we don't have any units of measurements. Question three, remember there was a decimal point in there, and the answer is in pounds. Now, because it is in pounds, we have to have 0 0.50, showing that that is 50 pence. If you have just put the pound sign and 247.5, then you need to correct it. So tick and fix with your green pen because money must be shown to two decimal places. So we must have 0 0.50. Question four, um, you must have your units of measurement, which is centimetres. So a hexagon has six sides. Because it's regular, we know that each side is the same length. So the calculation we need is 68.7 divided by 6. So if you need time to tick and fix, please pause the video. If there are any questions you don't understand, please have a look at them again and see if you can work out where you have gone wrong. But those questions are very similar to the ones we were doing yesterday. So when you're ready, we will move on. Okay, we're going to go straight in now to a 10 quick questions. So the first column is rounding to the nearest 1,000 and the second column is rounding to one decimal place. So when you are ready, um, pause the video and you can have a go at these. I will go through the answers in a moment. Okay, we're going to go and look at the answers. Remember, 450 to the nearest thousand will round down to zero. Um, 9,499, because we haven't got to the 500, it will round down to 9,000, rounding to one decimal place. So we have one place shown after the decimal points. So 5.99 has to go up to 6. The correct answer there is 6.0. If you have just put 6, then the answer is wrong because you have not shown one decimal place. The correct answer is 6.0. 
and again with 0 0.999 it rounds up to 1.0. If you have only written the answer 1 then you need to correct it because one decimal place means we have to have the 1.0 to show the 0 in our one decimal place. And then let's look at the tricky question. So 4 cubed is 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 60. 16 times 4 is 64. Times 1,000 is 64,000. If we are rounding that to the nearest 100,000, then we would round up to 100,000. If you need time to tick and fix, please pause the video to do so, otherwise we will move on with division. Okay, so we're going to look at some division calculations and think about what is the same and what is different. So 86 divided by 2, 8.6 divided by 2, 86 divided by 0 0.2, 8.6 divided by 0 0.2. So I'm just going to give you a moment to have a little think and see what is the same about those four calculations and what is different about those four calculations. Okay, we can see that all the calculations involve the digits 8 and 6 and 2. However, the digits are shown with different place values, so they have different values. 86 is not the same as 8.6, but it is related to 8.6. So the first two questions are both dividing by 2, but we are starting with a different number. The second two questions, again, we are both dividing by 0 0.2. 0 0.2, again, is similar to, but not the same value as 2. So let's see what these differences make, or what difference the differences make. Let's look at them one at a time. So the first question, 86 divided by 2. Now you know how to do this. We could represent it in this form. We can do a calculation and the answer is 43. You can probably do that one in your head. Nice and straightforward. Let's look now at 8.6 divided by 2. Can we do that one? We can. We can do exactly the same using our bus stop method. We just have a decimal point. So this time our answer is 4.3. It is 10 times smaller than the top question because 8.6 is 10 times smaller than 86. Let's look at the third question, which is where it gets to be interesting. Now I can represent this as a fraction, but I have my denominator as 0 0.2. I don't want to have a decimal as a denominator. I need to make that an integer, a whole number, so that I can complete a bus stop division. So what do I have to do to 0 0.2? to make it into an integer, a whole number, I multiply by 10. 0 0.2 times 10 will give me 2. So I'm going to multiply the 0 0.2 times 10. But we know from work we've done on fractions that if we multiply the denominator by 10, we must multiply the numerator by 10. Whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. So 0 0.2 times 10 gives us 2. 86 times 10 gives us 860. So I can rewrite my fraction. Both of those have exactly the same value, but I've got rid of that tricky 0 0.2 at the bottom. And I know how to divide by 2. So I can use my bus stop 
860 divided by 2 and the answer is 430. By getting rid of the decimal by multiplying by 10, I've got rid of the decimal, so I'm now dividing by 2. But whatever I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. Let's have a look at the next question. 8.6 divided by 0 0.2. So again, I have that 0 0.2 that I want to make into an integer. So again, I need to be multiplying by 10. Let me write it out as a fraction. 8.6 divided by 0 0.2. So again, I multiply the denominator at the bottom by 10, which will give me 2. And I multiply the numerator. <laughs> Excuse me number on top so 8.6 times 10 this time gives me 86 86 divided by 2 now i've already calculated that in the top calculation but if need be i can calculate it again and i know that my answer is 43 so 86 divided by 2 is exactly the same calculation as 8.6 divided by 0 0.2 Now, 86, you can see, is shown in a circle there. That means it is our MCQ code for today. So could you please note down our MCQ code for today is 86. Let's see how many people put notes to say there is no MCQ code in the video. And thank you to those that do see it and do make sensible and appropriate comments. Okay, let's look at another one. So this time, 5 divided by 0 0.02. Now I need to get rid of the decimal and turn it into an integer because I know I can use bus stop division to divide by an integer. So this time, instead of 0 0.2, I have 0 0.02. So I need to multiply by 100 to turn that into an integer, to turn that into a 2. So if I write it as a fraction, 5 divided by 0 0.02, I multiply top and bottom by 100. So 0 0.02 times 100 becomes 2, and 5 times 100 is 500. So now my calculation has got much easier, 500 divided by 2. Most of you can do that in your head. If not, you can do a bus stop, and the answer is 250. The calculation is much, much easier than trying to uh, do the calculation that we are first presented with. We haven't changed the value. The values are equivalents. We talked about equivalent fractions in our knowledge check. They have exactly the same value. What about 6.6 .6 divided by 0 0.12? Again, I'm dividing by 0 0.12 and I need to be dividing by an integer. So I need to turn my 0 0.12 into an integer, and I do that by dividing by 100. You can see I have two decimal places, so I need to multiply by 100 to make that an integer. So first I write it as a fraction, 6.6 .6 divided by 0 0.12. Then I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 100. 0 0.12 times 100 will give me 12. And 6.6 .6 times 100 will give me 660. I haven't changed the calculation. I have shown it as an equivalent fraction. Then I can now use a bus stop because I know my 12 times table and find out that the answer is 55. Let's look at a third example which might catch you out. 68 divided by 5.0. Now 5.0, I have one decimal place, but do I need to multiply by 10? No, I don't this time because we know that 5.0 
is exactly the same as 5 on its own. And 68.5, we know we can easily do and get the answer 13.6. So I don't have to make it any more complicated. 5.0 is exactly the same value as 5, so therefore I can just complete the calculation. So it's okay to have a decimal on the top of my fraction, uh, my numerator, but I must always have an integer, a whole number that I am dividing by. So the number on the outside of the bus stop, the number I'm dividing by, always has to be an integer, a whole number. Okay, so if you read the instructions at the top of the page, I have asked you to write the equivalent calculation. Do not calculate the answers. So you are making these into a simpler calculation that we can use a bus stop division to work out. So the first one I've started for you. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by 10 and then express that as a simpler division. So if you would like to pause the video and see if you can write these out as an equivalent calculation. So please leave your answer um, in linear form, so as a line rather than as a fraction. Let me say that again. As a line rather than as a fraction, do not calculate the answers. We are simply finding the equivalent calculation. So making it ready to be used in a bus stop, but not actually finding the answers. So exactly the same as on the previous page. If you need to just go back and check, please do. Okay, so if you would like to pause the video, and when you're ready, we can move on. So we will look at the answers. So as you can see, I haven't actually given you the answers to the calculation. I have just just shown the calculation that will make it simpler. So on the first one, I have multiplied both by 10, so I have 720 divided by 3. On question 2, you can see that I have had to multiply by 100 because I had two decimal places. So this time I have 800 divided by 4. I have to multiply both by 100. On the third question, question 3, I have to multiply by 10. So my 0 0.3 becomes 3 and 7.2 times 10 is 72. Question 4, I'm dividing by 0 0.03. There are two decimal places, so I have to multiply by 100 to make that 3. If I multiply 7.02 by 100, I get 702. Question 5, I'm dividing by 0 0.4, so I need to multiply by 10 to make that 4. If I then multiply 0 0.32 by 10, I get 3.2. Question 6, I'm dividing by 0 0.06. I have two decimal places, so I need to multiply by 100 to make that an integer, to make it 6. If I multiply 72 by 100, I get 7,200. Question 7. I'm dividing by 0 0.3. I have one decimal place, so I need to multiply by 10. So 0 0.3 times 10 gives me 3. 7.02 multiplied by 10 gives me 70.2. Um, question 8. I'm dividing by 0 0.15, which has two decimal places, so I need to multiply by 100. So 0 0.15 times 100 gives me 15, and 0 0.075 times 100 gives me 7.5. Question 9. 
question 9. I'm dividing by 0 0.07, which has two decimal places, so I need to multiply it by 100. So 0 0.07 times 100 gives me 7, and 0 0.004 times 100 gives me 0 0.4. And question 10, I'm dividing by 0 0.024. Here I have got three decimal places, so I am multiplying by 1,000. So 0 0.024 times 1,000 gives me 24. 0 0.96 times 1,000 gives me 960. So hopefully you can see that all the calculations are now much simpler calculations that we can do with a bus stop division. It doesn't matter if I am left with a decimal to divide as the long, long as the number I'm dividing by, the number that will go outside the bus stop is an integer, a whole number. So having done that, we're going to go straight on to another you do. This time, I would like you to again write the simplified or equivalent calculation. And this time, I would then like you to calculate the answers using bus stop. Or if the numbers are within your times tables, you may not need to use a bus stop. So if you would like to pause the video and have a look at these questions. Remember, you need to simplify the calculation. Find the equivalent calculation. You must have an integer, a whole number that you are dividing by. This time, you will find the equivalent calculation and calculate the answers. So if you would like to pause the video and press play when you are ready to tick and fix. OK, we will move on to look at the answers. So I have written both the equivalent calculation and the answers. Now, some of those answers you can do in your head. Some of them you will need to do a bus stop division to get the correct answer. OK. If there are any questions that are tricky, have a look and see if you can work out where you have gone wrong. If you are still finding it tricky, go back to the previous page and look at the equivalent calculations. I know you have absolutely smashed bus stop division, so I know once you have the calculation, you will be able to find the answers. So what you have done here is you've taken some quite tricky looking calculations and you've managed to work out the divisions. So well done, that's absolutely amazing. So if you need to pause the video to continue to fixing, please do so. Um, if not, let's see what's next. Okay, so before we stop, I'm going to leave you with some challenge questions. Now there are four different questions there, and we will look at the answers of them tomorrow. If you wish to do them, I would absolutely love to see your workings. So it'll be fantastic if you can take photographs and post them. Um, you don't have to do them, but I know you love challenging yourselves and are really up for doing some really tricky questions. So it will be lovely to see some photographs of some work or some comments about these in the comment section. Um, other than that, I will leave them with you. Have a lovely rest of the day and I will speak to you again tomorrow. Goodbye.